Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're here, I'm sure you already know what challenge it is that I am doing today, but just in case anybody isn't aware, there has been a challenge going around for a little bit called the Clan Generator Challenge, in which you basically randomize a clan from a specific generator and it randomizes, I believe it's like 12 to 18 cats for you with specific coats and markings already designated they have their own name and they have specific sets of traits and the spirit of the challenge actually way back when it first started i randomized a clan and i chose to stick with the very first one that came up which happened to be tree clan the unstable and the hardy now this was completely filled to the brim with blue and green cats, so I tried to base the setting and the story around these specific cats to the best of my ability. I never really felt super attached to this clan, just as a disclaimer, because I did randomize and suck with the very first one that it came from, but I did try and come up with a good backstory for them anyway. So despite them being called Tree Clan, I actually kind of came up with the idea that they're in a more rocky bluff setting next to the ocean instead of in a forest area or an area with a lot of vegetation. And part of that is just because of the blue and cream aesthetic. It was just really hard for me to picture a family of blue cats thriving in the forest for some reason. So I just felt like the stormy setting just made sense for them. So the reason that they are called Tree Clan, however, is because there is a tree that they base their entire clan life around, and this is basically where they get connected to Star Clan at. And through this tree, Star Clan sends the clan signs. So whenever the tree is doing well or something specific happens to the tree, then they view that as a sign that something is going to happen to the clan as well in direct relation to that. So they are called the Unstable and the Hardy. So the Hardy comes from them thriving in this really harsh environment where there's not a whole lot of vegetation, not a whole lot of food. The waters are too stormy and too rough to really even fish in. So they kind of just get by with like goals and mice and anything that comes along like that. But they are very unstable in the sense that they have been traditionally passing down leadership and deputy positions to those within the family, basically. So there's kind of a lot of corruption and a lot of competition around that. And eventually a lot of the clan kind of was starting to get fed up with this obvious nepotism. It's not really fair when you work really hard and leadership still stays within the same pause that they view as undeserving. So this was starting to build up a lot of tension within the clan. And eventually, food started getting scarcer and scarcer, the land started getting harsher and harsher, and the tree that they based their life around actually died. So the clan decided that at that time, that was the sign from Star Clan to move on from this place. There's nothing else for them here. So a lot of the clan actually left, not very recent, but also not very distant. I'd say probably like a year or two. Uh, they all just left for the most part, and that left pretty much just the main family that has been running the clan for a very long time, and a few select offshoots of kitty pets and loners and other families that didn't really want to risk a journey leaving. They still felt like this was their ancestral home. The tree, despite its death, has started to petrify, so maybe they're thinking that it's just a different kind of setting that now they have to live with and different kinds of traits they now have to begin to encompass Sinbad is joining me. So basically they just decided to stick it out here. Uh, but for the most part that hasn't really helped their unstableness. There's still a lot of contention around the deputy and leadership positions. The current leader feels a lot of pressure to try and get away from that even with as few cats remaining as there are but that also means that the cats that are generally actually probably more deserving of deputy ship positions and medicine cat positions just aren't getting those positions either so it's a really uncertain time uh, just with the close family connections of the clan that there currently is the long-term survival of the clan is still up for debate and honestly, some of the younger generation are probably wondering where the rest of the clan went and if it's possible to follow them. So that's just a backstory for the clan. Sorry that's so long. 
but I felt like it's good to know the context of what's going on just to understand where I'm making the basis for the characters and the design. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's just go ahead and jump right into the first cat here, our leader Crane Star, formerly named Crane Leg. He has a very generic description being that he's a long hair blue tom with amber eyes. So I based this design both off of long hair blue cats and his namesake Cranes, specifically in the darker mane that he has along the front, just to kind of give it a little bit of distinguishment from just a generic all blue cat. Crane Star is a clear example of the nepotism that runs deep in this clan as he was given deputyship by his father Sun Star as a result of some of the unease that was going through the clan at the time. Sun Star believed that his rigid personality was what was driving a wedge between the clan so he felt that Crane Leg was going to be a good foil for his very rigid personality with a very relaxed and looser personality. The rest of the clan, however, viewed this decision for deputyship as a clear example of the issue that was at Paw. When Sunsar unfortunately soon died after that, the clan didn't really accept Crane Star as their leader unless he changed and showed that there was going to be a clear difference between the Crane Leg up before and Crane Star now, just in the sense that they needed some extra security or an example that he was going to be more than what they thought he was. Crane Star, however, being the kind of cat that he is, was like, oh, well, if you guys want to go, feel free. You shouldn't have to say against your own will. The clan did not feel very reassured in this and took this as a sign that, yes, this is their time to go. So they left. Crane Star does, however, care very deeply for his clan and the family that remains. He cares so much that he actually jumped after one of the few remaining kits of his clan when they fell into the rocky bluff below. And in saving this kit, he fell into the rough turf and was bashed against rocks. A lot of the clan believes that he walked away very lucky with only a scratch above his eyebrow. But in reality, Crane Star actually sacrificed eight of his nine lives in that singular instance, just drowning in the waves and being hit over and over against the rocks. And by the time he washed up on shore, he was bleeding heavily from a head wound. Uh, he'd never really relate to anybody, not his deputy, not his mate not his medicine cat that this happened, he felt that acknowledging that he lost so many lives in one go was going to be acknowledging that maybe he wasn't the best choice for leadership, and while he is immune to some of the darker turnings that are going around in the clan, he understands enough that it's probably not going to be wise to admit that immediately after the majority of the clan left, that their remaining leader has only down to one life as well. So he's going to trust that the remaining cats that come after him are going to do a better job, but he still does hope to lead a long and full and fulfilling leadership life. So our next cat up is actually the very first cat that I drew for this challenge. I chose to start off with the deputy because I felt I could get a clearer design and a clearer way to start off with her. But it's pretty obvious as time goes on how much my style has shifted even from this. So, Sherville Stripe is described as a black and red spotted calico she-cat with short fur and blue eyes. Serval Stripe actually came from the kitty pet place and she came into the clan with her brother, who is now the medicine cat, so we'll see him in a second. She is made to Crane Star and she is slightly younger than him, though not by much. Due to her relative inexperience and the fact that she feels that there's a lot more qualified cats for the position, she really is struggling to try and prove herself against those who believe that she can't do as well as they could. Uh, Crane Star did pick her because he felt that her open attitude and sense of diligence and doing her work was going to be better for the clan than kind of leaning into nepotism accusations and going for other clearer choices for deputy. And he just genuinely also trusts that she'll do a great job after him in keeping the clan and going on a track that is best for them. Now is also a good time to mention that whenever I am designing these cats, I'm trying to take inspiration from their namesake in some way and incorporate that into their design or their personality. So for Shrivel Stripe, it's a type of herb. I try to incorporate that into her patternings. 
and just generally, if you see weird lines showing up sometimes, that's just my program wigging out. I don't really know where it's coming from or why it's doing that. I just try and stay away from it, and I'm only just now realizing I completely misspelled her name here. Our next cat up here is our medicine cat, Russifer, who is described as a red classic pseudo tabby tom with curly fur and copper eyes. His design did give me some troubles just because between the pseudo tabby, which nobody can agree on what that means, and what curly fur sure the pick does, I just had some troubles. So I went with the general soft boy look for him, which does match his personality very closely, as he is a very gentle cat, even though the curls did give me some trouble. As will be obvious in the footage that man should save, unfortunately not all of it did. So... Ultimately, Russet Fur came over to the clan after the majority of the clan had departed with Shrivel Stripe, his sister. The old medicine cat left, feeling that it was very obvious that Sar clan had given them a clear sign and therefore the logical conclusion was to just go. So Russet Fur stepped into their paws soon after. He felt a calling to healing and while he always liked the idea of Sar clan, he never actually spoke to them in any meaningful way, which has caused a lot of anxiety about what that means, whether they just disliked him personally, or whether it's the case that Sarklane either never actually existed, or maybe they were tied to the tree in a meaningful way, and with the tree's death, then he can't commune with them. So he doesn't really know, he's trying to keep that pretty much hidden to himself, which is also contributing to the instability, because a lot of the clan is pushing for signs from Star Clan to prove that they're still there, and Russet Fur either has to fake the signs or he has to just be like, they haven't said anything to me lately. So he's very anxious about that and what that means for the clan, but otherwise he's just a good boy doing his best. Moving on, we go to our most senior warrior and most renowned warrior as a whole. Hornet Stripe, who is described as a mostly white, blue and cream mackerel calico she-cat with short fur and hazel eyes. Hornet Stripe is the cousin to Crane Star through their mothers. Both of their mothers were mated to two brothers, so very close family ties indeed. She is one of those cats that really views scars as trophies and would often remove healing items in order to ensure that they would scar and make her look more intimidating. She was always the one that would throw herself into any danger without any regard for herself and that's how she earned a lot of those scars to begin with. She is one of the most ambitious cats of the clan, believing that she should have been chosen for deputyship by Sunstar for her viciousness, basically. She felt that the clan really needed a strong personality and somebody who was going to guide them through any means necessary, and that was certainly not Crane Star. She has plans to try and throw him off a cliff in a way that looks like an accident and not like somebody intentionally threw him off, and these plans of hers are going to be coming through to fruition sooner rather than later, or at least attempt to. Her design is probably one of the most interesting ones. I can see what I was going for when I did her design, but I also don't understand what I was doing with her belly, and the stripes are a bit more interesting there as well. I definitely think there's better ways I could have gone about it, but she ultimately just lives up to her name and is a very vicious warrior with very clear, uncomplicated motives. Our next warrior is Aspen Blaze, who is described as a sparse-haired blue she-cat with hazel eyes. Aspen Blaze is half-sister to Hornet Stripe, and while Hornet Stripe got all the muscle, Aspen Blaze got a lot of the brain. So Aspen Blaze is kind of your typical Scar from Lion King character in that she doesn't have a lot of muscle, but she does like to try and manipulate people who are stronger than her into doing her will. So basically, Hornet Stripe thinks that like a coup or trying to go against Crane Star was all her idea, when in reality it was actually Aspen Blaze's. Aspen Blaze obviously is going to look very different from the other cats, and part of that comes from me not really understanding what a sparse haired cat is. So I kind of thought that a lichen cat design would probably best encapsulate that. So basically what happened with Aspen Blaze is that Hornet Stripe and her mother 
was made it to Sunstar's brother, and then the brother ended up dying tragically a little while before Aspen Blaze's birth. And Aspen Blaze's mother moved on very quickly and decided to go on a tryst with the loner who was a lichen cat. And it resulted in Aspen Blaze, who is kind of somewhere in the middle. She's more sparse haired on her paws and face naturally, but the rest of her fur can come in very quickly. However, she was bullied quite a bit as a kit because of her mismatched parentage and the fact that her mother moved on so quickly led to some contention between her and Hornetpaw when they were younger. And so that led to a lot of anxious behaviors and unhealthy outlets of those anxious behaviors. So one of the ways that cats will let out anxious behaviors is by over grooming, which can also result in a lack of fur, especially on the belly. So she is pretty sparse in hair anywhere that she can reach. And even as she started to overcome that anxiety, the habit still remained. So she's often found grooming herself at the edge of the camp. And this habit has also led to that lack of fur. She doesn't really care how others see this behavior. If anything, she thinks that it's okay if they underestimate her senses because then she can take advantage of them easier later. If she's seen as this more timid, anxious cat still. And a lot of the clan still hasn't really caught up to that. She is the most likely to backstab anybody in the clan for literally any reason. It just grudges that she never really let go of anything as minor as you took the blackbird that she wanted to eat today can lend you on her bad list. So Aspen Blaze is pretty much planning on using Hornet Stripe to get rid of Crane Star and then to dispose of Hornet Stripe by putting the blame accordingly on her and leave the deputyship and leadership position open for herself by consequence. Of course, her full stripe is going to have to disappear before then as well, but that'll be a perfectly natural accident. Aspen Blaze is most set on leadership, but since the clan believes that Crane Star still has his full lives, She's currently planning for the long game and doesn't necessarily realize that any actions that she takes now are going to lend to more immediate consequences. So it'd be very interesting to see how that natural die would fall. The next cat that we have up here is Stormstream, who is litter mate to Crane Star and another cat who we'll be seeing here in just a second. Stormstream is a, described as a short haired, blue and cream, mackerel, tortoise shell, she cat with amber eyes. So once again, we've got some really classic coloring coming in there with this clan. She is the first cat that I drew after my hiatus of a few months, so I did try and replicate the style I was using previously. Though really in hindsight, this probably just isn't how I would draw cats moving forward. It'd be, of course, similar, but there's other preferences I think I would have for drawing like their eyes and just general body proportions. So if you see any jittering here, I'm also trying out different programs. I'm just seeing what's working best here, basically. Stormstream definitely takes after the hardy more than the unstable. She is always good for her lap and is an incurable gossip. She can often be seen around camp, and she's more likely to comment on what you brought in than bring in anything herself. That can lead to some tensions around camp, especially by warriors who feel that they're working hard and she's not really contributing. But she does contribute in her own way by being a bit of a camp homebody, granted. She would probably honestly not even be best described as a warrior or even a queen. She just does other camp duties, so she is more likely to be organizing the herb stores for Russet Fur or easing some of his worries with a very well-placed joke than anything else. She really is just all around very sweet, but she's also very mischievous. If there's going to be anybody that's going to put a thorn in your bedding and then blame it on apprentices, it would definitely be Stormstream, and she definitely gets that from her mom. She is all around one of my favorite cats and just look at her little gremlin ears. It just really suits her personality. For her markings, I try to go up with something that kind of was reminiscent of like rainwater falling down while also being true to a tortoiseshell marking. I'm not really sure how successful I was, but all in all, I think she turned out okay. The next cat we have up is actually litter sibling to Cranestar and Stormstream 
His name is Lavender Briar, and he is described as a blue classic tabby tom with long fur and copper eyes. Lavender Briar is a very stern cat. He has some scars on his shoulder from an instance as a kit where he felt like his clan had disappointed him, just in the sense that he felt that the clan could have protected him better and failed to do so. So part of his resolve is that no cat should ever have to feel the same that he did when he was younger. And he has proven to be a very good warrior in terms of both his values as well as his capability. So Lavender Briar was a clear choice for deputyship when Sunstar's old deputy decided to retire at the time, but Sunstar decided to go against the grain and chose Crane Leg instead of Lavender Briar. A lot of the clan disagreed with this decision. If Sunstar was to give deputyship to any cat, they felt it should have been Lavender Briar, who in a lot of ways was a mini Sunstar. But that isn't ultimately what happened. A lot of the clan felt that he was slighted once again when Cranesar chose Shervil Stripe instead of him for deputyship once again. Lavender Briar himself doesn't really feel super slighted by this. He's just intent on trying to be the best word that he can be for himself. And ultimately is just keen on proving that however he needs to, be it in battle or in the clan or just doing things around the camp to help out. He is going to be the prime mentor for a lot of cats, and a lot of cats look up to him as the ideal warrior. He has no real idea about some of the darker happenings of the clan, he's very immune to that, and he's just generally intent on doing the best that he can do in the circumstances. I based Lavender Briar's design off of obviously Lavender and Briar's, and the Lavender really came through in his tail markings ultimately. Whereas I tried to incorporate like spiny, sharper stripes to incorporate the Briar aspect of his name. Briar also just makes sense for him due to his stern and kind of prickly personality. But underneath all that fluff, he does have a very kind heart. The next warrior that we have up here is called Asphodel Blaze. Not to be confused with Aspen Blaze. He is described as a cream spotted pseudo tabby tom with short fur and copper eyes. Asphodel Blaze is actually a mate to Hornet Stripe, and together they do have a kit. Asphodel Blaze is part of that other cream family that I mentioned earlier, and is a prominent member of that family, uh, being one of few remaining cats in it anyway. But he is unrelated to Hornet Stripe, just to clarify that. Asphodel Blaze has a bit of a prickly personality and he also falls more on the unstable than the hardy category for this clan. Asphodel Blaze is still a relatively young warrior which I try to encompass a design of his eyes and up until recently he was a very carefree personality. However, about when the rest of the clan left he was captured by two legs for a short period of time before he was returned. During this time, he was actually neutered as a part of a TNR program. The two legs around thought that there were too many cats, so they decided to take matters into their own hands. So he actually has a bit of his ear cut off to signify that. Following the surgery, it was pretty obvious what had happened to him as the rest of the cats could scent it on him. So he became very insecure, both about his lack of being a tomcat anymore and also just about his status in the clan and what that means for the already shrinking clan. He tends to be very defensive and lash out at any cats that try to remark on it, or anybody he views as pitying. Asphodel Blaze has no ambitions to take over the rest of the clan. He really just wants to belong, and he wants what was lost to him. The next cat up, and actually the final warrior that we have for this clan, is Suit Cloud. Sue Cloud is described as a short-haired black mackerel tabby tom with amber eyes. Unfortunately, I did lose the recording for drawing him, but I'll just go ahead and give a quick explanation for my choices. Sue Cloud wasn't described with any white, however, I felt like it really was very necessary for his design for some reason. Despite his name being Sue Cloud, he didn't really feel like he'd be entirely an all-black cat to me. Sue Cloud earned his name because he always has his head in the proverbial clouds. 
Soup Cloud was actually the kit that Crane Star lost most of his life saving. And despite having fallen from such a high place and was at risk of dying as a result, Soup Cloud has never really given up climbing and can be frequently seen in the tree that the clan based their name off of. This is actually seen as a bit of blasphemy by some of the more traditional members of the clan who believe, since the tree is their direct connection to Sar Clan, believe that only the leader and the medicine cat should have any contact with it at all. However, Crane Star has developed quite the fear of heights following his run in with the rocks, and Russet Fur has his own misgivings with Sar Clan, so nobody really chases Suit Cloud out of the tree very often. Suit Cloud often just goes up there and daydreams about what clan life could be or what else may lay out beyond the vast shores of the ocean, and generally is a very strange character. Nobody really understands what he's thinking, nobody really understands his motives, he's just kind of there. He does warrior tasks when prompted, but if he was left to his own devices, he'd be just someplace up high staring out at something and thinking. And not a lot of his clan understands that. Next cat up in our first apprentice is Marigold Paw, a short hair, blue and cream, mackerel calico she-cat with blue eyes. Marigold Paw is daughter to Hornet Stripe and Asphodel Blaze. And while she shares her burly bills and has high expectations for what she could become as a warrior, Marigold Paw actually just wants to be a medicine cat. She really finds a lot of comfort and healing, and she wants to commune with Star Clan in a meaningful way. However, her parents, and Hornet Stripe in particular, has really high expectations for the kind of warrior that she'll become. And so she's gone through as a warrior apprentice anyway, underneath her own mother and oftentimes just doesn't really know how to communicate with others and share that she's unhappy in her role. She is an older apprentice, so her warrior ceremony is going to be happening sooner rather than later. And she is very nervous for what that may entail because she thinks that once she becomes a warrior, then that's it. She'll have no do-overs to go back to Medicine Cat ways. Part of the pressure also comes just in the sense that Marigold Paw, as a medicine cat apprentice, would not be able to take a mate or have kits. And with the clan dwindling as it has been, she would be expected to become a queen sooner than later. The only eligible bachelor in the clan, however, is Suit Cloud, and just given his strange demeanor, not a lot of the cats of the clan, Marigold Paw included, are very keen to interact with him, and the thought of taking him on as a mate really unnerves her. But again, she just doesn't know how to go about saying this. So she's very anxious about what the future holds for her, and she just doesn't know how to relay that. Marigold Paw really just has the kind of vibe of like, oh yeah, I did really great in training today, but um, I've actually got something to tell you, mom, in my head. So I try to entail that with her pose and expression. She definitely shares her dad's like kind of large eyes and small ears vibe. Which is something that I was really trying to go for for her. I feel like the expectation to make a pretty cat, especially for a cat named Marigold Paw, is very high, but that just isn't the kind of cat that I envisioned her to be. She's more considered a fighter traditionally than any kind of healer or beauty, and that's okay, but that's not what she wants to do. The next two cats I actually drew together being Thistlepaw and Poppypaw. Thistlepaw is described as a long hair blue tom with hazel eyes, and Poppypaw is described as a long haired red classic pseudo tabby tom with amber eyes. I'm sure both of those descriptions are fairly familiar, so I made these Crane Stars and Shrivel Stripes kits, who are relatively young as far as apprentices go. Um, this little paw is basically a mini crane star. I did try and give him slightly different markings to help distinguish the two. This little paw's fur is also just generally a bit more unruly to go for his thistle name. Poppy Paw just mostly gets his name from his red coloring, so I made him a bit of a darker orange than some of the other cats. 
Dissipaw and Poppypaw are probably the most stereotypical apprentices ever. They're just excited to be here. They're happy to train. They've got their uncle Lavender Briar and their mother Shovel Stripe as mentors, so they're in very capable paws. They're not really at the point yet where they're aware of the dire situation that the clan is in terms of their relations and how large the clan is. So for right now, they're just happy to be out learning, they're happy to be growing. I drew them trying to mock battle here, and I think generally it was okay. Proportions are a little bit odd. Thistlepaw is generally the less competitive of the two, but both of the brothers are pretty competitive with one another. Thistlepaw is a very gentle cat, and Poppypaw is just definitely energetic. I wouldn't even say he's like ambitious or anything very malevolent, but he does want to do well. He is constantly competing with his brother, with himself, to do better, to get the better prey item, to climb higher, to do anything better. And that's about all that there is to say about them at this juncture. Whenever what happens happens with Crane Star, they're going to be the hardest hit, and they're probably the most in line for a rude awakening whenever that does happen. The next cat up in the Fur Queens is Cormorant Tail, who is described as a short haired, black spotted tabby she cat with green eyes. Cormorant Tail is a stricter cat and a little bit on the older side. In terms of age, she falls just after Hornet Stripe and just before Aspen Blaze. Cormorant Tail is the mother to Suit Cloud, and she is currently pregnant by Suit Cloud's father who was part of the old clan before the rest of the clan split off. Cormorant Tail was informed by her mate that he was planning on staying in the old clan with her, just because she didn't feel that she could travel with the rest of the clan due to the plans for her parenthood. And just due to Sue Cloud's nature, she didn't really think that Sue Cloud was going to be up for any kind of a journey. Even as a kid, he was a bit strange and prone to danger. Her mate stayed with her to help raise him and long enough for her to get pregnant with another litter, but then another cat came back to collect him and against her wishes he left her, his unborn kids, and Soup Cloud in Tree Clan. She was kind of under the impression that they were always going to stay in Tree Clan because she didn't feel that she could make the journey herself. Her mate decided to scorn her and left on his own. Cormorant Tail is honestly one of my favorite designs. I just really like her cheek patternings and spots, but ultimately her pose is kind of underwhelming. In terms of her pregnancy, she's about halfway along, I'd say. She's expecting quite a large number of kits, and just facing that alone, she doesn't really know how well she's going to do, especially with a relatively inexperienced medicine cat to help guide her. She resents the other queen for having a supportive partner and just really any help in the clan. Being one of the few cats that wasn't connected directly through close family ties between the blue and the cream family, she feels like an outsider already, especially since her only kit, Soup Cloud, that grew to warrior age, is so strange and is just relatively disregarded by the rest of the clan. It really puts her on edge, it makes her feel set apart, and she does worry for the sake of Sue Cloud and for her unborn kits how well they're going to be taken care of by the clan after she's gone. She's certainly not an old cat. She's kind of upper middle age, but this is definitely enough to leave her with worry for the future, especially if she were to have any more kits after this. Cormorant Tail doesn't really approve of Crane Star as a leader, but she's not really likely to do anything about it either. She just is generally very pessimistic about her fate and is just really concerned with the fate of Tree Clan as a whole. She thinks that there's not a whole lot in the future for her, and that's generally just how she goes about it. Cormorant Tail. I would say, since I'm going to probably never touch this clan again, would be having a very large litter of five kits. And the fate of those kits during the coup for Crane Star's position is definitely up in the air. The next cat and the last queen is Bee Berry, who is described as a long-haired, cream-spotted tabby she-cat with yellow eyes. I made Bee Berry sister to Asphodel Blaze due to their cream-colored nature, and she is mate to Lavender Briar. 
Despite Lavender Briar's prickly personality, he does care quite a lot for all of the cats, and Bee Berry, who is a very sweet queen by nature, really took to him, and together the two are going to be having their very first litter of kits here soon. Bee Berry is much further along than Cormorant Tail, but this is her first litter, so she's only going to have about three kits or so. She is very anxious about that whole process, and she is glad to have the company of Cormorant Tail, even if Cormorant Tail is a little bit on the grouchier side. Bee Berry is probably the sweetest cat that there is, and her health just generally is kind of up in the air, especially post litter. Bee Berry, I made a very fluffy, very round, very soft cat, as that is just her personality. Really, Honey may have just been a better name for her, but everybody thinks that Bee Berry suits her just fine. Bee Berry is likely going to become a permanent queen after her litter, as she really just likes kits and wants to continue to provide for the clan in that manner. I drew Bee Berry with her eyes closed just because I felt that that really kind of situated the personality and take that I was going for. Just a kind of bashful nature of her own ineptitude because she is so pregnant. She is in fact actually overdue for her litter, and that's not really helping her ease her anxiety about the process that she's going to be going under. If I had drawn her eyes open though, Bee Bear's eyes would be a very beautiful honey color. Not dissimilar to the background of the bee photo that I chose for her. There isn't really a whole lot else to say about Bee Berry. She's just a sweet cat. She's here. She's going to have Kit soon, and she's definitely ready for the process to be over and done with now. The final cat of Tree Clan is Gadwallfoot, who is our only elder. Gadwallfoot is described as a short haired blue she cat with green eyes. Gadwallfoot is the mother to the Crane Star, Stormstream, and Lavender Briar. Gadwallfoot is a pretty plain cat just in terms of the description there as well so i did give her a few extra markings just to also match up with her kits gadwall foot's mate sunstar was a long haired classic tabby male so between the two i definitely think that they match up with their children in terms of appearances gadwall foot has a quite a bit of a playful personality, and as I said earlier during Stormstream's portion, she is a bit of a goblin, for lack of better terms. She is constantly pretending to be dead just to see if anybody would notice. She is pulling pranks and blames her personality on what she's doing. Everybody thinks that she's definitely still in her right mind, but she's just crazy enough to make them doubt. Rainstar, Stormstream, and Lavender Briar don't remember her being quite this bad, but they definitely think that she's really hamming it up just to get away with things more often than not. She would pull ideal pieces of prey right out of another cat's mouth if she thought that it looked good enough for her to just take, and she's just generally a very oddball character. She doesn't really groom herself anymore, so despite being short-haired, she has quite a lot of flyaways, and I tried to incorporate that. Her jaw also isn't quite what it used to be, and chronic infection has led to her constantly putting out a tooth or two just to keep it away from touching other teeth, and that's kind of left her with a weird overbite. Whenever Aspen Blaze's plots start to come up, she's probably not even going to really notice it. She recognizes that Crane Star, Stormstream, and Lavender Briar her kits to a certain extent, but she doesn't really care for them to the same affinity that most queens care for their kits. In her eyes, her kits are grown, her kits for the most part have families. She doesn't expect Stormstream to ever take a major kit, so she thinks that they've all kind of fulfilled their family life and have already passed on a legacy. So in that sense, she doesn't necessarily care what happens to them anymore. It sounds a little bit crass, but that's just her mindset. Once you have kids, you've given a chance to future generation, and you've done your due diligence. A lot of people think that this is actually why she's lived to be the age that she has been, when a lot of the other elders have either died of sickness or starvation, or just moved on from the clan, just given the harsh environment. It's just her blasé attitude has led to her not caring enough to not die. So I pretty much just drew her with darker markings that she would have had in her youth. 
But I did add on some silver patches to her fur where her age is starting to show. Uh, with that, I think we'll just go ahead and head into wrap up though. I will try and keep this brief as this video has already gone on long enough. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Comment down below so I know that you're a real trooper. But just generally speaking, I would really like to do this challenge again. Not just because I kind of came up with this really weird clan to generate the first time, but also because I just genuinely think I could do better. Partially through the challenge, I was just rushing to try and get it done to move on to a clan that I could actually come up with a more cohesive story for and actually felt closer to the characters about. So I just do think I'll go ahead and do this again with a much closer cleanup. I can see so many parts where I just didn't color inside the lines, the shading was weird, I just didn't care to redraw something that looked a little bit off to me. And just genuinely, I don't think that that's the best effort I could have given this, so I'm going to go ahead and do this again sometime. It probably won't be for a while, just due to the nature of this kind of challenge. Maybe split up into multiple parts, so if you care to see that again, please let me know as well what you'd like to see and how you'd like to see it. If you'd like to see this a bit sooner than later, then it'd probably be multiple parts just to put that out there as a disclaimer. Just generally speaking, it is good to see how my art style has changed, even when I was trying to replicate what I was doing before. I also am glad to have had this opportunity just to see the different recording softwares and how those speed paints turned out. So this was definitely a good experiment, but I'm happy to be putting Tree Clan away to rest. If by chance people did like the story or what I did with these casts, let me know. I will be touching Tree Clan again if there is enough requests for it, but otherwise I'm just really happy to start new and see what else is in the future for my Warrior Cat clans. Okay, thanks again for sticking it out this long. I'll go ahead and wrap this up here, it has definitely been long enough. Until next time, I hope you all have a great day, stay safe out there, and see you in the next video.